Uh, hello everyone again. Uh, so now we're going to be covering food chains and food webs. Your EQ is how do different organisms get the energy they need to survive. So make sure you write this down in your notes. Okay, so a little more information about biotic factors. So we have this thing called habitat. Um, habitat is defined by the environment that meets the needs of an organism. Uh, so the habitat is the one that allow uh, the stuff an organism needs in order to stay alive. Obviously, uh, humans, um, uh, <laughs> we overindulge, but most or other organisms just uh, live in areas where they have just enough to keep them alive. Okay, uh, so this tree is a habitat. Uh, what is it a habitat to? Um, so what kind of stuff? of this tree allows organisms to live in it. So you may think like a bird. Um, it may need, it, it might meet the needs of a bird to create like a, a little nest in order, and it gives it enough cover so it can lay its little eggs and allow them to hatch. Um, so it can provide protection from predators. Um, you can get something like an insect that burrows into the tree and is able to deep, get nutrients from the, or, uh, from the tree itself. And that this would be the habitat, the the habitat or the tree. Uh, that's basically um, what things can live on the tree. You also have the tree's habitat. Uh, what kinds of things does the tree need? The tree needs um, uh, water, obviously. Um, this does not look like a very dry place. It needs water in order to stay alive. If there was like a, if it was uh, really cloudy all the time and it didn't get enough sunlight, it would not be this green and lush. Uh, it needs sunlight, it needs oxygen, it, it needs carbon dioxide, it needs uh, to not be encased in wax or plastic in order to maintain it alive and needs nutrients in the soil. Uh, so it has a habitat, it has needs. Niches is the organism's role or job in the environment. So the niche, we're talking about uh, the kind of job it does, like what does it produce for it, the environment. So this tree's niche. Uh, so what does it provide? Like I mentioned before, it has um, it, it provides a home for certain organisms like birds, uh, maybe some worms that will burrow themselves into the trunk, uh, and many other organisms. Spiders can build a little home there and catch other insects that are trying to go in there. Um, I mean, the, the list can go on and on. It, it pre creates a home for a ton of organisms, and also when it's, the leaves come down, it can pro provide nutrients for the soil. Uh, and put the put those those nutrients back into the soil so it also produces those things and don't forget it's doing photosynthesis so it's producing oxygen for other organisms such as ourselves okay so job description for this tree it absorbs sunlight serves a food source cover the ground with dead leaves in the fall and much more like i mentioned before okay so there's three types of niches there is the first type which is producers that means you produce your own food for energy. Um, so basically you don't have to eat anything. You basically collect stuff from the environment and make your own food. Uh, plant and algae are photosynthetic, so basically that's what they do. The second type of niche is called consumers. Um, consumers eat other things to get energy, birds, humans, basically anything that has to go hunting. Uh, decomposers. Decomposers feed on waste of plants and animals and their remains after they die. Example, fungus. Um, you can argue vultures. Uh, things like that, that uh, basically wait for things to die and then they just absorb all of the nutrients from that dead thing. Um, that would, the decomposers, that's what they are. Bacteria or such organisms. Okay, so uh, we divide the consumers into other parts. Um, four types of consumers. So the consumers, um, the second type of niche is divided into uh, four types of, uh, of, into four sections. So there's herbivores, carnivores, omnivores, and scavengers. Okay, I'm going to go through this quickly because it's pretty easy. Uh, herbivores, you eat only plants, um, primary, and they're called also primary consumers because all they do is eat plants. Uh, primary things. Uh, carnivores are organisms that eat only other animal, animals, so they only eat meat. Omnivores are eat both plants and animals. We fall under omnivores. 
scavengers organisms that eat dead organ organisms uh your vultures um things like that flies cockroaches hyenas they only eat dead things um uh, mostly because they don't like to bother hunting for other things that are more difficult to catch um so we have our first trophic level our producers second trophic level level which are primary consumers plant predators then you get, have your secondary consumer herbivores and your tertiary consumer carnivores so you also have trophic levels that depict that depict um the different levels of consumers so you have your producers your primary consumers your secondary consumers and your tertiary consumers and um, this is important because it shows how energy gets transferred from one organism to the next the energy all comes from the sun so this is at the bottom of the vocabulary page that you guys did for homework um, so you are going to fill out a food chain, a sample food chain. So we start off here with water and sunlight coming into this food chain. So everything starts off with water and sunlight. Uh, then we have a producer, grass, that uses the water and sunlight to create something. For example, leaf material and um, glucose and energy. Uh, so we have the grass standing in as the producer at this point. Then we have a primary consumer that eats the grass, that takes the energy that is be, uh, the, the, the energy that's produced by the grass, it gets taken up by, let's say here, a grasshopper. That would be our primary consumer. Then we get a secondary consumer. That organism eats the grasshopper. In this case, it's a snake that eats the grasshopper. Then we have a tertiary consumer. That's the hawk that picks up the snake and eats the snake and takes the energy from the snake and into the hawk. That's where the arrows go. And then the hawk dies eventually here, and you get the composer that basically eats the remains of the hawk. Uh, so uh, this is show this is a food chain, and you could see here. Make sure you copy all these down in the appropriate areas of your worksheet. Uh, so you can see here the sun is the original source of the energy. Uh, make sure that you get that and you understand. That. So, uh, we have here the sun as the original source of energy, like it's a repeat from the previous page. Movement of energy within an ecosystem can be shown by food chains. So you can see here photosynthesis is where you get everything. Uh, all the food on this planet is due to photosynthesis. If you were to get rid of the sun, you would not, we would eventually run out of food because everything that we eat is basically everything that all animals eat. Uh, everything decomposing uh, eventually life on this planet would end without the Sun okay so uh, when you when energy moves through an ecosystem and one thing meets the next and you see energy moving from one level to the next level that is called a food chain and I want you to pay special attention to where the arrows are pointing they're pointing to um, basically where the energy is moving okay make sure you understand that Okay, then we get into something a little more complicated, um, but uh, a food web, because if you look at nature and who eats what and what eats where, the circle of life, all of that stuff, it's not a food chain. It's a food web. Um, and but it's a much better representation of how energy is passed in an entire ecosystem. Not, there's only, not like if you look on here and um, you look at this bird here, it's being, you see the energy going to the bird. That means that the bird is eating some seeds here and it's eating some grasshopper and it's eating some of these berries over here. Uh, it's getting energy from a lot of different places. So, and here you have this hawk up here. That lovely animal is eat, is getting energy from a lot of places. It's like eating the squirrel. It's eating the little blue jay here. It's eating the mouse. It basically is eating whatever it can get a hold of. And then you've got this wolf over here. Lovely little creature there. It's getting, it even takes down the big giant uh, um, moose here or whatever that is. That's a deer, a male deer. Uh, so it, it's getting a ton of um it, it'll take down it eats you know skunks it eats anything it can uh then you've got this lovely mountain lion here it'll take down like if you put a baby there it'll eat a baby it could eat an adult human too so i mean you just put people in here but we have guns so we don't get eaten but food webs are more like what we see in nature
So now we look at food webs. Uh, food web is a feeding relationship usually form complex food webs within an ecosystem. So here we've got, an, uh, this is called an aquatic uh, food web. Uh, this is not like the previous one, which is like the one on land. This is from the ocean. And here you have a couple of examples of the, how what eats what. So we've got plankton. Uh, you see the energy, uh, uh, the krill eating the plankton and the cephalopods over here um, eating the plankton. The plankton is photosynthetic, and so it's like the plants of the ocean. They're they're microscopic, and those are the the uh, copepods or herbace uh, herb herb <laughs> the copepods basically get eaten by the birds. The krill also eats those in addition to the phytoplankton. Uh, you also um, have carnivorous plankton that will also eat the copepods and krill. Uh, and then you get fish eating everything else. A lot, you know, the fish are getting stuff from the plankton, herb, 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 herbivorous plankton or copepods, basically. And the squid's eating the fish, and the fish is eating by, eaten by humans, um, sperm whale eaten by humans. Um, I mean, the, the baleen whale eats krill um, pretty much exclusively. The crab eating seal will eat the the krill. The, the birds are being be, being eaten by the smaller toothed whales. Um, the leopard seal will eat, eat um, birds that wind up in the ocean, such as penguins. Uh, and you see all of these kind of interrelated, and the energy is going up and it's going sideways, and it's going from one organism to the next, and and they're all passing it along. Sometimes you'll get a big fish eating a squid, the, um, a small squid. Sometimes you get the big squids eating the big, the little fish, and so on. Birds eating the fish, um, and things like that. Just the energy is going in. Remember, the arrow is going what's doing the eating. So, just remember in food webs to always look at where the arrow is pointing. Where the arrow is pointing is where the energy is going. So that means that the thing being pointed to is eating, okay? So just think uh, one really um, useful thing of thinking about food webs is that the arrow and food web, uh, food chains also, the arrow is going into an organism's mouth. So wherever the mouth is, the arrow is pointing to the mouth. That means it's getting eaten because that's how the energy is getting in through the mouth. So trophic levels. Each ecosystem has different feeding relationships that determine the energy flow and the pattern of chemical cycling. So e ecologists divide the species in a community or ecosystem into different trophic levels, as you have seen before. I mentioned those before, based on their main source of nutrition. So just because a cow sometimes eats insects that are living on the grass or hay that it's on, it doesn't make the cow a carnivore. Uh, so just because some sometimes the gra the the grass has animals in it, the cow will eat that. That doesn't make that cow carnivore. It's not going to go off hunting, you know, small bunnies. It won't eat a bunny. It'll eat, you know, the grass. And if there's something in there, it'll just come kind of come along with it. It doesn't mean the cow's a carnivore. So it the cow's a herbivore. Okay, so there's five trophic levels. We have producers, primary consumers, secondary consumers, tertiary consumers and decomposers. You'll see the energy decrease when you go from, uh, from level to level. So here we go again, this should be familiar with you. So it's broken up into different pro trophic levels. Here you've got your producers getting the energy from the sun. You see that in yellow highlight. Um, and here you, got, you have your primary consumers, your grasshopper, secondary consumers, your snake, tertiary consumer, your hawk, and your decomposers. The first trophic level are the producers. They're the organisms that make their own food from the sunlight. So they are the producers. Uh, plants and algae are the, uh, the example. Producers are all autotrophs. They support all trophic levels, either directly or indirectly, making, by making sugars and other organic molecules using sunlight. So your primary consumers, your producers are, your producers, I'm sorry, not primary consumers, your producers are the most important source of, of energy there is out there. Without your producers, the food, everything would collapse. Okay, primary consumers, uh, they are the second trophic level. They are lower organisms that eat producers. So lower organisms, that means small and not human. And um, they basically eat producers. Uh, and so we've got these uh, herbivores that consume food. 
uh, uh, um, producers. So <laughs> you've got bunnies, you've got snails, you've got grasshoppers, and many others that all they do is eat plants. They're a primary consumer. Then you've got your snake, secondary consumer. Your, um, so tr that's the third trophic level, secondary consumers, next level of organisms that eat primarily consumers. So their main source of food is primary consumers. So snake, spider, fish, frog, they basically eat the primary consumers, and that's called the third trophic level. Um, and so these are carnivores. Uh, the next level of secondary consumers, these are carnivores that eat herbivores. Um, so basically... Um, and you, you, um, then you've got your tertiary or your fourth trophic level, tertiary consumers, highest level of organisms that can eat any level of consumer. So tertiary consumers would be basically like uh, humans too. Uh, so hawk, lion, uh, they, these are things at the top of the food chain. Generally, humans are not included in food chains or food webs even because it's very difficult. We pretty much go and everywhere, so we're not at it. But tertiary consumers are... Are basically the fourth trophic. So here we got you've got a couple. These are carnivores that eat other carnivores. So uh, you basically these are organisms that eat everything else, um, and they are basically predators. Okay, decomposers. They're not a trophic level at all. They consume eat uh, that. They're consumers that eat the waste and dead matter, uh, change organic matter back into carbon dioxide and nutrients recycling. They basically do, nu do nutrient recycling. And this is fungi and bacteria. And what they do is recycle everything. And it, when everything dies, they bring it back into the environment. So here we are again, your tertiary consumer, your secondary consumer, your primary consumer, and your producers, primary producers. So. Um, from this, uh, you should just see that um, you st at the bottom you get the, you, you. This is on the left side here, right here. This is on land. What we see back here. This is what we see on land. We see plants. Plants get in, eaten by some kind of herbivore, like a grasshopper. The herbivore is eaten by a carnivore or some kind of um, rat type thing there. And then we have this carnivore eating this rat type thing. So we get this movement of energy up. Uh, then we have our primary primary producers uh, over here in the ocean would be phytoplankton. Phytoplankton get eaten by zooplankton. They're the primary consumers. Then those zooplankton are eaten by carnivores. In this case, fish, your secondary consumer. And then you have your higher level carnivore, your tertiary consumer that eats those fish that ate the phytoplankton, zooplankton that ate the phytoplankton. It sounds like the uh, the woman that it, you know, swallowed a fly. But anyway, that's where the energy goes. Uh, so you have primary consumers, primary uh, primary producers, primary consumers, secondary consumers, and tertiary consumers.
So uh, this little comic here, uh, it basically shows you, you know, this little bird is going keep keep cat, and then the cats are watch out. It could have bird flu, and then the cow stand back. Uh, you can get SARS from the cats, and then run. It's a cow. Like okay, so uh, what can you get from the cow? Think about mad stuff. Okay, so what is the meaning of this comic? Okay, so please, uh, what do you think it is? And uh, how might the context of the comic affect our lives? So how will humans change because of the effect? And how it, do you think, uh, how is the comic false or over-exaggerated? So how is this not really what's going on, but an exaggeration of kind of the way people feel? Um, and you have to look at uh, how we feel about uh, uh, all kinds of things in our lives, like don't eat that, don't eat this because of, you know, concerns for our health. Uh, so that kind of uh, is where this comic stands in. Okay, so this is the conclusion of our notes. I uh, hope you guys were able to fill in everything you needed. Uh, make sure that you paused at areas that needed to be paused at so you can keep up with the notes. And I hope you guys understand uh, this the, the stuff here. Please, uh, as far as trophic levels and consumer levels, make sure you straighten those out because something that's tertiary, consu uh, uh, tertiary could be a secondary consumer. Uh, make sure that you've got those straight because that can be quite confusing. Also, make sure you can uh, memorize um, a land uh, food web and something that found a terrestrial food web that's uh, like on land and or food chain on land and one in the ocean because um, those of you that are going to be taking a science test either this year or next year, they tend to want to, to you to uh, be able to identify one. So I would recommend you go back to that slide and try to memorize that, the ones that are in the ocean where um, the words, because they don't give you pictures, they just give you words. And so um, you need to make sure you are able to identify uh, a food web from a food chain and which ones are right and which ones are wrong. Um, I've seen these kind of questions show up on state tests so you may really go back and do those okay so i hope you um you enjoyed this and that you learned from it okay bye